In mathematics, the four-color theorem, or the four-color map theorem, states that, given any separation of a plane into contiguous regions, producing a figure called a map, no more than four colors are required to color the regions of the map so that no two adjacent regions have the same color. Two regions are called adjacent if they share a common boundary that is not a corner, where corners are the points shared by three or more regions. For example, in the map of the United States of America, Utah and Arizona are adjacent, but Utah and New Mexico, which only share a point that also belongs to Arizona and Colorado, are not. Despite the motivation from coloring political maps of countries, the theorem is not of particular interest to mapmakers. According to an article by the math historian Kenneth May, a Euro OE maps utilizing only four colors are rare, and those that do usually require only three. Books on cartography and the history of map making do not mention the four color property. A Euro three colors are adequate for simpler maps, but an additional fourth color is required for some maps such as a map in which one region is surrounded by an odd number of other regions that touch each other in a cycle. The five-color theorem, which has a short elementary proof, states that five colors suffice to color a map and was proven in the late 19th century. However, proving that four colors suffice turned out to be significantly harder. A number of false proofs and false counterexamples have appeared since the first statement of the four-color theorem in 1852. The four-color theorem was proven in 1976 by Kenneth Apple and Wolfgang Haken. It was the first major theorem to be proved using a computer. Apple and Haken's approach started by showing that there is a particular set of 1,936 maps, each of which cannot be part of a smallest-sized counterexample to the four-color theorem. Apple and Haken used a special-purpose computer program to confirm that each of these maps had this property. Additionally, any map that could potentially be a counterexample must have a portion that looks like one of these 1,936 maps. Showing this required hundreds of pages of hand analysis. Apple and Haken concluded that no smallest counterexamples exists because any must contain, yet do not contain, one of these 1,936 maps. This contradiction means there are no counterexamples at all and that the theorem is therefore true. Initially, their proof was not accepted by all mathematicians because the computer-assisted proof was infeasible for a human to check by hand. Since then the proof has gained wider acceptance, although doubts remain. To dispel remaining doubt about the Appella euro haken proof, a simpler proof using the same ideas and still relying on computers was published in 1997 by Robertson, Sanders, Seymour, and Thomas. Additionally in 2005, the theorem was proven by Georges Gunthier with general purpose theorem proving software. Precise formulation of the theorem, the intuitive statement of the four color theorem, that is, that given any separation of a plane into contiguous regions, called a map, the regions can be colored using at most four colors so that no two adjacent regions have the same color, needs to be interpreted appropriately to be correct. First, all corners, points that belong to three or more countries, must be ignored. In addition, bizarre maps can require more than four colors. Second, for the purpose of the theorem, every country has to be a connected region, or contiguous. In the real world, this is not true. Because all the territory of a particular country must be the same color, four colors may not be sufficient. For instance, consider a simplified map. In this map, the two regions labeled A belong to the same country, and must be the same color. This map then requires five colors, since the two A regions together are contiguous with four other regions, each of which is contiguous with all the others. If A consisted of three regions, six or more colors might be required. One can construct maps that require an arbitrarily high number of colors. A similar construction also applies if a single color is used for all bodies of water, as is usual on real maps. An easier-to-state version of the theorem uses graph theory. The set of regions of a map can be represented more abstractly as an undirected graph that has a vertex for each region and an edge for every pair of regions that share a boundary segment. This graph is planar, 
it can be drawn in the plane without crossings by placing each vertex at an arbitrarily chosen location within the region to which it corresponds, and by drawing the edges as curves that lead without crossing within each region from the vertex location to each shared boundary point of the region. Conversely any planar graph can be formed from a map in this way. In graph theoretic terminology, the four-color theorem states that the vertices of every planar graph can be colored with at most four colors so that no two adjacent vertices receive the same color, or for short, every planar graph is four-colorable. History, early proof attempts, Ma paragraph bias mentioned the problem in his lectures as early as 1840. The conjecture was first proposed on October 23, 1852 when Francis Guthrie, while trying to color the map of counties of England, noticed that only four different colors were needed. At the time, Guthrie's brother, Frederick, was a student of Augustus de Morgan at University College London. Francis inquired with Frederick regarding it, who then took it to de Morgan. According to de Morgan, a student of mine, Guthrie asked me today to give him a reason for a fact which I did not know was a fact a euro, and do not yet. He says that if a figure be anyhow divided in the compartments differently colored so that figures with any portion of common boundary line are differently colored a euro four colors may be wanted but not more a euro the following is his case in which four colors are wanted. Query cannot a necessity for five or more be invented a euro. F.G., perhaps one of the two Guthries, published the question in the Athenaeum in 1854, and de Morgan posed the question again in the same magazine in 1860. Another early published reference by Arthur Calia, 1879, in turn credits the conjecture to de Morgan. There were several early failed attempts at proving the theorem. De Morgan believed that it followed from a simple fact about four regions, though he didn't believe that fact could be derived from more elementary facts. This arises in the following way. We never need four colors in a neighborhood unless there be four counties each of which is boundary lines in common with each of the other three. Such a thing cannot happen with four areas unless one or more of them be enclosed by the rest. And the color used for the enclosed county is thus set free to go on with. Now this principle, that four areas cannot each have common boundary with all the other three without enclosure, is not, we fully believe, capable of demonstration upon anything more evident and more elementary. It must stand as a postulate. One alleged proof was given by Alfred Kempe in 1879, which was widely acclaimed. Another was given by Peter Guthrie Teart in 1880. It was not until 1890 that Kempe's proof was shown incorrect by Percy Hewood, and in 1891 Teart's proof was shown incorrect by Julius Peter Senior Euro. Each false proof stood unchallenged for eleven years. In 1890, in addition to exposing the flaw in Kempe's proof, he would proved the five-color theorem and generalized the four-color conjecture to surfaces of arbitrary genus a euro c below. Tiert, in 1880, showed that the four-color theorem is equivalent to the statement that a certain type of graph must be non-planar. In 1943, Hugo Hedwiger formulated the Hedwiger conjecture, a far-reaching generalization of the four-color problem that still remains unsolved. Proof by computer during the 1960s and 1970s German mathematician Heinrich Heesch developed methods of using computers to search for a proof. Notably he was the first to use discharging for proving the theorem, which turned out to be important in the unavoidability portion of the subsequent Appelhaken proof. He also expanded on the concept of reducibility and, along with Ken Dury, developed a computer test for it. Unfortunately, at this critical juncture, he was unable to procure the necessary supercomputer time to continue his work. Others took up his methods and his computer-assisted approach. While other teams of mathematicians were racing to complete proofs, Kenneth Apple and Wolfgang Haken at the University of Illinois announced, on June 21, 1976, that they had proven the theorem. They were assisted in some algorithmic work by John A. Koch. If the four-color conjecture were false, there would be at least one map with the smallest possible number of regions that requires five colors. The proof showed that such a minimal counterexample cannot exist, through the use of two technical concepts, 
an unavoidable set is a set of configurations such that every map that satisfies some necessary conditions for being a minimal non-four-colorable triangulation must have at least one configuration from this set. A reducible configuration is an arrangement of countries that cannot occur in a minimal counterexample. If a map contains a reducible configuration, then the map can be reduced to a smaller map. This smaller map has the condition that if it can be colored with four colors, then the original map can also. This implies that if the original map cannot be colored with four colors the smaller map can't either and so the original map is not minimal. Using mathematical rules and procedures based on properties of reducible configurations, Apple and Haken found an unavoidable set of reducible configurations, thus proving that a minimal counterexample to the four-color conjecture could not exist. Their proof reduced the infinitude of possible maps to 1,936 reducible configurations which had to be checked one by one by computer and took over a thousand hours. This reducibility part of the work was independently double-checked with different programs and computers. However, the unavoidability part of the proof was verified in over 400 pages of microfiche, which had to be checked by hand. Apple and Haken's announcement was widely reported by the news media around the world, and the math department at the University of Illinois used a postmark stating four colors suffice. At the same time the unusual nature of the proof for Euro it was the first major theorem to be proven with extensive computer assistance Euro, and the complexity of the human verifiable portion, aroused considerable controversy. In the early 1980s, rumors spread of a flaw in the Appelhaken proof. Ulrich Schmidt at a WTH Aachen examined Apple and Haken's proof for his master's thesis. He had checked about 40% of the unavoidability portion and found a significant error in the discharging procedure. In 1986, Apple and Haken were asked by the editor of Mathematical Intelligence to write an article addressing the rumors of flaws in their proof. They responded that the rumors were due to a misinterpretation of Schmidt's results and obliged with a detailed article. Their magnum opus, Every Plane a Map is Four Colorable, a book claiming a complete and detailed proof, appeared in 1989 and explained Schmidt's discovery and several further errors found by others. Simplification and verification, since the proving of the theorem, efficient algorithms have been found for four-coloring maps requiring only O, N2, time, where N is the number of vertices. In 1996, Neil Robertson, Daniel P. Sanders, Paul Seymour, and Robin Thomas created a quadratic time algorithm, improving on a quartic time algorithm based on Apple and Hakina Euro unregistered trademark S proof. This new proof is similar to Apple and Haken's but more efficient because it reduces the complexity of the problem and requires checking only 633 reducible configurations. Both the unavoidability and reducibility parts of this new proof must be executed by computer and are impractical to check by hand. In 2001, the same authors announced an alternative proof, by proving the Snark theorem. In 2005, Benjamin Werner and Georges Gunther formalized a proof of the theorem inside the Koch proof assistant. This removed the need to trust the various computer programs used to verify particular cases. It is only necessary to trust the Koch kernel. Summary of proof ideas the following discussion is a summary based on the introduction to Apple and Haken's book Every Planar Map is Four Colorable. Although flawed, Kempe's original purported proof of the four-color theorem provided some of the basic tools later used to prove it. The explanation here is reworded in terms of the modern graph theory formulation above. Kempe's argument goes as follows. First, if planar regions separated by the graph are not triangulated, that is do not have exactly three edges in their boundaries, we can add edges without introducing new vertices in order to make every region triangular, including the unbounded outer region. If this triangulated graph is colorable using four colors or fewer, so is the original graph since the same coloring is valid if edges are removed. So it suffices to prove the four-color theorem for triangulated graphs to prove it for all planar graphs and without loss of generality we assume the graph is triangulated. Suppose V, E, and F are the number of vertices, edges, and regions. Since each region is triangular and each edge is shared by two regions, 
we have that 2e equals 3f. This together with Euler's formula, VAE plus F equals 2, can be used to show that 6VA2E equals 12. Now, the degree of a vertex is the number of edges abutting it. If Vn is the number of vertices of degree N and D is the maximum degree of any vertex. But since 12 greater than 0 and 6 AIA per mil 0 currency for all IA per mil 6 yen, this demonstrates that there is at least one vertex of degree 5 or less. If there is a graph requiring five colors, then there is a minimal such graph, where removing any vertex makes it four colorable. Call this graph G. Then G cannot have a vertex of degree three or less, because if D, V, A per mil three currency, we can remove V from G, four color the smaller graph, then add back V and extend the four coloring to it by choosing a color different from its neighbors. Kempe also showed correctly that G can have no vertex of degree 4. As before we remove the vertex V and 4 color the remaining vertices. If all four neighbors of V are different colors, say red, green, blue, and yellow in clockwise order, we look for an alternating path of vertices colored red and blue joining the red and blue neighbors. Such a path is called a Kempe chain. There may be a Kempe chain joining the red and blue neighbors and there may be a Kempe chain joining the green and yellow neighbors, but not both, since these two paths would necessarily intersect, and the vertex where they intersect cannot be colored. Suppose it is the red and blue neighbors that are not chained together. Explore all vertices attached to the red neighbor by red-blue alternating paths, and then reverse the colors red and blue on all these vertices. The result is still a valid four coloring, and V can now be added back and colored red. This leaves only the case where G has a vertex of degree 5. But Kempe's argument was flawed for this case. He had noticed Kempe's mistake and also observed that if one was satisfied with proving only five colors are needed, one could run through the above argument and use Kempe chains in the degree 5 situation to prove the five color theorem. In any case, to deal with this degree 5 vertex case requires a more complicated notion than removing a vertex. Rather the form of the argument is generalized to considering configurations, which are connected subgraphs of G with the degree of each vertex specified. For example, the case described in degree 4 vertex situation is the configuration consisting of a single vertex labeled as having degree 4 and G. As above, it suffices to demonstrate that if the configuration is removed and the remaining graph 4 colored, then the coloring can be modified in such a way that when the configuration is re-added, the four coloring can be extended to it as well. A configuration for which this is possible is called a reducible configuration. If at least one of a set of configurations must occur somewhere in G, that set is called unavoidable. The argument above began by giving an unavoidable set of five configurations and then proceeded to show that the first four are reducible. To exhibit an unavoidable set of configurations where every configuration in the set is reducible would prove the theorem. Because G is triangular, the degree of each vertex in a configuration is known, and all edges internal to the configuration are known, the number of vertices in G adjacent to a given configuration is fixed, and they are joined in a cycle. These vertices form the ring of the configuration. A configuration with k vertices in its ring is a k-ring configuration, and the configuration together with its ring is called the ringed configuration. As in the simple cases above, one may enumerate all distinct four colorings of the ring. Any coloring that can be extended without modification to a coloring of the configuration is called initially good. For example, the single vertex configuration above with three or less neighbors were initially good. In general, the surrounding graph must be systematically recolored to turn the ring's coloring into a good one, as was done in the case above where there were four neighbors. For a general configuration with a larger ring, this requires more complex techniques. Because of the large number of distinct four colorings of the ring, this is the primary step requiring computer assistance. Finally, it remains to identify an unavoidable set of configurations amenable to reduction by this procedure. The primary method used to discover such a set is the method of discharging. The intuitive idea underlying discharging is to consider the planar graph as an electrical network. 
initially positive and negative electrical charge is distributed amongst the vertices so that the total is positive. Recall the formula above. Each vertex is assigned an initial charge of 6 deg, V. Then one flows the charge by systematically redistributing the charge from a vertex to its neighboring vertices according to a set of rules, the discharging procedure. Since charge is preserved, some vertices still have positive charge. The rules restrict the possibilities for configurations of positively charged vertices, so enumerating all such possible configurations gives an unavoidable set. As long as some member of the unavoidable set is not reducible, the discharging procedure is modified to eliminate it. Upland Haken's final discharging procedure was extremely complex and, together with the description of the resulting unavoidable configuration set, filled a 400 page volume, but the configurations it generated could be checked mechanically to be reducible. Verifying the volume describing the unavoidable configuration set itself was done by peer review over a period of several years. A technical detail not discussed here but required to complete the proof is immersion reducibility. False disproofs The four color theorem has been notorious for attracting a large number of false proofs and disproofs in its long history. At first, the New York Times refused as a matter of policy to report on the Appella Euro Haken proof fearing that the proof would be shown false like the ones before it. Some alleged proofs, like Kempe's and Teert's mentioned above, stood under public scrutiny for over a decade before they were exposed. But many more, authored by amateurs, were never published at all. Generally, the simplest, though invalid, counterexamples attempt to create one region which touches all other regions. This forces the remaining regions to be colored with only three colors. Because the four-color theorem is true, this is always possible. However, because the person drawing the map is focused on the one large region, they fail to notice that the remaining regions can in fact be colored with three colors. This trick can be generalized, there are many maps where if the colors of some regions are selected beforehand, it becomes impossible to color the remaining regions without exceeding four colors. A casual verifier of the counterexample may not think to change the colors of these regions, so that the counterexample will appear as though it is valid. Perhaps one effect underlying this common misconception is the fact that the color restriction is not transitive, a region only has to be colored differently from regions it touches directly, not regions touching regions that it touches. If this were the restriction, planar graphs would require arbitrarily large numbers of colors. Other false disproofs violate the assumptions of the theorem in unexpected ways, such as using a region that consists of multiple disconnected parts, or disallowing regions of the same color from touching at a point. Generalizations The four-color theorem applies not only to finite planar graphs, but also to infinite graphs that can be drawn without crossings in the plane, and even more generally to infinite graphs for which every finite subgraph is planar. To prove this, one can combine a proof of the theorem for finite planar graphs with the de Brugge-Euroweders theorem stating that, if every finite subgraph of an infinite graph is k-colorable, then the whole graph is also k-colorable Nash-Williams. This can also be seen as an immediate consequence of Kurt Gar paragraph Dell's compactness theorem for first-order logic, simply by expressing the colorability of an infinite graph with a set of logical formulae. One can also consider the coloring problem on surfaces other than the plane. The problem on the sphere or cylinder is equivalent to that on the plane. For closed surfaces with positive genus, the maximum number p of colors needed depends on the surface's Euler characteristic i according to the formula, where the outermost brackets denote the floor function. Alternatively, for an orientable surface the formula can be given in terms of the genus of a surface, g. This formula, the Heawood conjecture, was conjectured by P. J. Heawood in 1890 and proven by Gerard Ringel and J. W. T. Youngs in 1968. The only exception to the formula is the Klein bottle, which has Euler characteristic zero and requires six colors, as shown by P. Franklin in 1934. For example, the torus has Euler characteristic I equals zero and thus P equals seven so no more than seven colors are required to color any map on a torus. Similarly, 
toroidal polyhedra such as the Silesi polyhedron all require seven colors. A Ma paragraph bias strip requires six colors as do one planar graphs. If both the vertices and the faces of a planar graph are colored, in such a way that no two adjacent vertices, faces, or vertex face pair have the same color, then again at most six colors are needed. There is no obvious extension of the coloring result to three-dimensional solid regions. By using a set of inflexible rods, one can arrange that every rod touches every other rod. The set would then require n colors, or n plus one if you consider the empty space that also touches every rod. The number n can be taken to be any integer, as large as desired. Such examples were known to Frederick Guthrie in 1880. Even for axis parallel cuboids an unbounded number of colors may be necessary. See also, graph coloring, the problem of finding optimal colorings of graphs that are not necessarily planar. Gra paragraph TZSCH's theorem, triangle-free planar graphs are three colorable. The Dwidger-Euro-Nelson problem, how many colors are needed to color the plane so that no two points at unit distance are part of the same color. List of sets of four countries that border one another, contemporary examples of national maps requiring four colors, Apollonian network, the planar graphs that require four colors and have exactly one four coloring, notes, George's Genthia. Formal proof for Euro the four color theorem. Notices of the AMS 55, 1382 a Euro 1393 are from this paper. Definitions a planar map is a set of pairwise disjoint subsets of the plane, called regions. A simple map is one whose regions are connected open sets. Two regions of a map are adjacent if their respective closures have a common point that is not a corner of the map. A point is a corner of a map if and only if it belongs to the closures of at least three regions. Theorem, the regions of any simple planar map can be colored with only four colors, in such a way that any two adjacent regions have different colors. Hud Hudson. Four colors do not suffice. The American Mathematical Monthly 110, 417 a Euro 423. JSTORA 3647828A, ABWW Rouse Ball The Four Color Theorem, in Mathematical Recreations and Essays, Macmillan, New York, pages 222 to 232. Donald Mackenzie, Mechanizing Proof, Computing, Risk, and Trust P103, FG, Tinting Maps, The Athenaeum, 726A. Brendan D. McKay. A note on the history of the four-color conjecture. A.R. Ziv, 1201.2852. A.B. de Morgan, Augustus, The Philosophy of Discovery, Chapters Historical and Critical. By W. Huell, The Athenaeum, 501 Euro 503 a, Tirt, P.G., Remarks on the Colorings of Maps, Proc. R. Sock. Edinburgh 10. 729R, Gary Chartrand and Linda Lesniak, Graphs and Digraphs P221, References, Allaire, F., Another Proof of the Four-Color Theorema Euro Part 1, Proceedings, 7th Manitoba Conference on Numerical Mathematics and Computing, CONGR. Numa. 20, 3 Euro 72A, App, Kenneth. Haken, Wolfgang. Every planar map is four colorable part one discharging, Illinois Journal of Mathematics 21, 429 a Euro 490 a, App, Kenneth. Haken, Wolfgang. Koch, John, Every planar map is four colorable part two. Reducibility, Illinois Journal of Mathematics 21, 491 a Euro 567 a, App, Kenneth. Haken, Wolfgang. Solution of the four-color map problem, Scientific American 237, 108 Euro 121, doi, 10.1038-slash Scientific American 1077-108a, app, Kenneth. Haken, Wolfgang, every planar map is four-colorable, Providence, Rhode Island, American Mathematical Society, ISBN A0-8218-5103-9a, Bernhardt, Frank R., A Digest of the Four-Color Theorem, Journal of Graph Theory 1, 
207 a euro 225 doi 10.1002 slash jgt 3 billion 190 million 10305 a boradin ov solution of the ringel problem on vertex phase coloring of planar graphs and coloring of one planar graphs metodi disk no analyzer 12 a euro 26 108 832128a Cayley, Arthur Ontario The Colorings of Maps, Proc. Royal Geographical Society 1, 259 Euro 261, doi, 10.2307 1799998, JSTORA 1799998A, Fritsch, Rudolf. Fritsch, Gerda, The Four Color Theorem, History. Topological Foundations and Idea of Proof, New York, Springer, ISBN A 978-0-387-98497-1A, Gunthia, Georges, Formal Proof for Euro The Four Color Theorem, Notices of the American Mathematical Society 55, 1382 A Euro 1393A, Gunthia, Georges, A Computer Check Proof of the Four Color Theorem. Unpublished Shader, Hedwiger, Hugo, Alborain Classification der Strecken Complex, VIETELJSCHR. Natafish. Giz. Zar 1 quarter rich 88, 133 a euro 143 a, Heoud, PJ, Map Color Theorem, Quarterly Journal of Mathematics, Oxford 24, 332 a euro 338 a, Magnant, C. Martin, D. M., Coloring Rectangular Blocks in Three Space, Discussions Mathematici Graph Theory 31, 161 Euro 170, doi, 10.7151 slash DMGT 1535 A, Nash Williams, C. St. J. A., Infinite Graphs A Euro A Survey, J. Combinatorial Theory 3, 286 A Euro 301, doi, 10.1016 per second 0021-9800, 67, 80077-2, Mrow, Mrow 214501 a O'Connor. Robertson, The Four Color Theorem, Magshatir Archivia, Peg, A. Melendez, J. Beringer, R. Sendra, J. R. Hernandez. Del Pino, J. Book Review. The Colossal Book of Mathematics, Notices of the American Mathematical Society 49, 1084 Euro 1086, Bibcode, 2002 ITED. 49.1084A, DOI, 10.1109 slash TED. 2002.1003756A, Reed, Bruce. Wright, David, Painting the Office. Mathematics in Industry Case Studies 1, 1 a Euro 8 a, Ringel, G. Youngs, J. W. T., Solution of the Heoud Map Coloring Problem, Proc. Natal. Ackard. Psy. USA 60, 438 a Euro 445, Bibcode, 1968 PNAS. 6438R, DOI. 10.1073 slash FNAL 60.2.438, PMCA 225,066, PMIDA 16,591,648, Robertson, Neil. Sanders, Daniel P. Seymour, Paul. Thomas, Robin, Efficiently for Coloring Planar Graphs, Efficiently for Coloring Planar Graphs, STOC 96. Proceedings of the 28th Annual ACM Symposium on Theory of Computing, ACM Press, PPA 571 Euro 575, doi, 10.1145-237814.23805A, Robertson, Neil. Sanders, Daniel P. Seymour, Paul. Thomas, Robin, The Four Color Theorem, J. Komen. Theory Sir. B70, 2 Euro 44, doi, 10.1006 slash JCTB. 1997.1750 a, Satie, Thomas. Kanyan, Paul, 
The Four Color Problem, Assaults and Conquest, Science 202, 424, Bibcode, 1978 Sci. 202424 S, DOI. 10.1126/science 202.4366.424 ISBN 0-486-65092-8 Swart, ER The Philosophical Implications of the Four Color Problem American Mathematical Monthly 87 697 a Euro 10.2307/2321855 JSTOR 2321855 Thomas Robin An update on the four color theorem Notices of the American Mathematical Society 45 848 Euro 859R Thomas Robin The four color theorema Tietz Heinrich Inage Bemerkenden zum Problem des Karten für Currency RBENS auf ein Sertigen für Currency Chen, some remarks on the problem of map coloring on one sided surfaces, DMV Annual Report 19, 155 Euro 159 R, Thomas, Robin, Recent Excluded Minor Theorems for Graphs, PA 14 R, Wilson, Robin, Four Colors Suffice, London, Penguin Books, ISBN A 0 691 11533 8. -a. External links Haswinkel. Mikiel, ed. Four Color Problem. Encyclopedia of Mathematics. Springer, ISBN A 978 1 55608 010 4. -a. Wellstein, Eric W. Blanier Snarks, Math World. Wellstein, Eric W. Map Coloring. Math World